All right, guys, you can break it down really any way you want. And if you're going to build a combat robot, I support you. Do it any way you want. But I'm going to talk about my four phases. Maybe you saw Robot Wars, BattleBots, one of these other robot leagues, and you saw something cool, you saw something fun, thought, maybe I want to do that. You already started your concept phase. It's going to go, first is the concept, which is just an idea. Then you're going to have sort of a pile of parts gathering phase. Then you're going to have the prototyping phase. And then you're going to test, which in this case could be real world testing. You've got some idea in there. Maybe it's not fleshed out. That's fine. You're just going to keep exploring, maybe looking at different robots, gathering ideas, putting pieces here and there. And then when you feel like you've got enough of an idea, you're going to try to start turning that into physical parts, which maybe might just be picking out wheels and motors, which is very important, not only for you know size and placement of your robot, but also because you're building for a weight class. And if you're not really close to your maximum weight, then you're leaving performance on the table. And if you're over it, you're not competing. So you need to hit weight. The first thing I suggest you invest in would be a scale. Now, some people do design their entire bot in like a CAD software, and that's great. You know that you can assign materials. You can say, this is aluminum, this is steel, this is plastic. And it'll tell you exactly how much weight you're using based on you know the mass and the density of different materials. And that's amazing. But unless you're an experienced builder, you've built many combat robots, chances are you are gonna have to do redesigning. Things will be too tight, over-designed kind of. So that's just something you have to worry about if that's the method you're taking. I prefer to get my hands dirty. We're gonna get right into it with the scale. Before I buy any motors or wheels or anything like that, I'm just gonna to try to get a feel for the weight class, which in this case, I'm going to try to build something for the Norwalk Havoc Robot League, NHRL. They're great because they start at three pounds and go up to 30 pounds, which in my opinion is a great range. Three pounds is like perfect for having not expensive parts, but also being big enough that it's not a pain in the butt to squeeze them all in. You know what I mean? We're gonna go with a three pounder. So I got my scale here, which measures up to 20 pounds. I personally have some aluminum lying around from other projects. I'm gonna weigh a few pieces, kind of see what we get. My concept is to have a spinner of some kind. And since I'm not experienced at building them, I think probably one of the best ones to start with would be a drum or beater spinner. I know the FingerTech beater bars get a pretty good reputation, but I'd like to try something a little more advanced than just buying my bar. So I do happen to have two different types of aluminum tubing here. This is about an inch and a half diameter eighth inch thick wall and this is about two and a quarter diameter with quarter inch thick walls. I cut about an inch of each of them and I'm gonna weigh it. All right here's the thinner 24 grams per inch. Here's the thicker 70 grams per inch. All right. I also have some eighth inch aluminum here, which I believe this is about a little over five inches by four and a half inches or so. 138.39. And I do have this thicker, this is a, an old hard drive bracket, but it's a quarter inch thick aluminum, roughly the same size. 390. Being in the three pound weight class means we have about 1,360 grams, which is three pounds, to play with. Now, based on that, I think this smaller, thinner tube that we weighed probably wouldn't be heavy enough for a weapon, whereas this bigger, thicker tube, 
I think would be a good weight for a weapon. And it can be lightened, it can be increased in weight with teeth. There's room to play there. And um, I think that would work. It also kind of works for the size because I can get wheels probably roughly this big. Now, this is the longest section of this tube I happen to have on hand. I'm trying to use what I have as much as I can. This is about five and a quarter inches. Let's see how much this one weighs. Three sixty nine, three seventy. Oh, and I almost forgot. I do have a bearing here that would work. So I'm going to see how much this one weighs. About sixty one, sixty grams. With the scale, we can start moving from the concept phase into the pile of parts stage. That's where we start, right there. Doesn't look like much yet, but once we get some wheels and motors, it'll look like something. Stay tuned as we build this robot together.